Do I look tired? I feel like I look tired. <laughs> you all, Farmer Jesse here. Uh, so today I want to talk a little bit about the great month we're having in market. Uh, w some of the things that are contributing to having a great month. And then also some of the effects of scaling up that fast and what it's kind of done to us physically and just like mentally uh, and some of the, the sort of longer term effects of the farm, what we're looking at in August as repercussions of having a really crazy June. So let's do it. Before we get into it, if you have not checked out the Frith Farm event, go check that out. Frith Farm, Daniel Mays, is going to be down here in October at Rough Draft Farmstead to do a intensive on their system and also come over to the farm and do a little farm tour and we'll talk just generally about no-till market gardening. Uh, I know there will be other no-till market garden podcast guests there, at least one. So. Check that out, link will be in the show notes, also at notillgrowers.com under the events tab. All right, here's the thing. It's been a great month. It's been our best month ever at market. We're making about $2,000 a week in market sales in Lexington, Kentucky. So I wanna talk about some of the contributing factors to that first. Uh, some of the contributing factors are just the market itself. Lexington is amazing. It's an exceptional market. The customer base is loyal. They are there. Uh, it's amazing. And the other thing about that is it's really well run. You can live in any city you want, but if you do not have a good market manager like ours, Josh is amazing. He can sell anything at anybody's booth. Quick aside, he turned, he explained what no till was to somebody and that customer is still a customer. They come back every week. So Josh is awesome. That's a huge contributing factor is just having a good market and a good market manager. That is enormous. Another big contributing factor for us this year has been doing market twice. We're doing two markets a week, uh, Saturdays and Sundays. Last year we took Saturdays off. Sundays are really good for us, so we were able to take Saturdays off. Uh, and that was our day off for the week, and it was really nice. We could hang out with family and all those good things. Uh, this year we tried, we decided to bring on some extra help, so we needed to make a little bit more revenue, and uh, we decided to pick up Saturdays. I don't regret it at all. It's a longer day, it's three hours longer, but we make as much money on Saturdays as we do on Sundays. A little unfortunate that Sundays are three hours shorter and we make the same amount of money, but it is, it is valuable for us. It's also been a pretty good season, especially for cooler weather crops, lettuces and carrots and those sorts of things. It's been a cooler June. May was hot, June's been cool. So that's been nice and it's been pretty wet. It's almost been too wet. Right now we're getting uh, kind of an absurd amount of rain and uh, I'm a little bit worried about our lower tomatoes because they're in a spot that doesn't drain as well. It's like kind of rocky, it's a weird spot. Um, so I'm a little bit worried we may lose some of those, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully the no-till will help manage those that water a little better. Anyway, carrots have been huge for us. We don't do a lot of microgreens. Like making, you know, we're earning a decent income, but we're not doing it exclusively off microgreens. We do probably about a hundred-ish dollars a week on microgreens. Uh, that's pea shoots and broccoli shoots and sunflower shoots now. We also mix some of the pea shoots in with our lettuce mix, so that helps. People love that. Carrots have been huge. Head lettuces have been huge. Beets have been really good. Uh, and those are just excellent sellers. I also really love retail marketing. Hannah and I are both, we really like doing it. Nate has been great at it. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, those are all kind of small but contributing factors to it. And then there's kind of the whole array of things that have been affected by that, by the amount of work we've been putting into market. One is stuff like this, like, this is the garlic patch. It's gonna come out soon. But you can see all those scapes that we'd never got to. That's a product of just being too busy, of just having it low on the list. Now, I will say I've done this before where we've left scapes on and it doesn't affect the bulb size that much as much as some people sort of think it does, at least in our experience with music. And so I'm not that worried about it. Um, 
But it's one of those little things that I, is kind of bothering me. It's these, all these little things like missed cultivations, not getting stuff planted as often as possible, not getting it started as quickly as, and as regularly as we usually do not being able to keep up with some of the prunings. We lost our cucumbers. Our cucumbers actually went down with bacterial wilt. Um, little things like that added up because we were so busy harvesting, we're harvesting over 50% of the time. Really, you wanna be harvesting about 50% of the time, but if you go over that, you're leaving over half of your space for harvesting and less than half of your time for planting, cultivating, and all the other things that come with farming. And I think that down the road, this is gonna have an effect in August, right? Like everything's like two months out in farming. So in maybe late July and August, we're gonna to start to maybe see some gaps and some things that we wouldn't normally see or we wouldn't want to see. Um, and we may see some weed issues in certain places. And we don't have a lot of weed issues, but we do in the pathways. Pathway management's really tough with us because the rainfall and the slope, it, make, it just washes any cover we put out. And so I haven't figured out how to manage that yet. Um, that's one big challenge for us right now. And I should also say that part of the reason that so much work is going into harvesting is the carrots. Like I said, we've done a lot of carrots, but one thing about carrots is the labor in them is a lot. Even with a good washing system and a good harvesting system, if you're super efficient, you're still putting, if we're selling 400 bunches a week, we're putting like six hours of labor or more into those 400 bunches. So it's costing a lot of money just to produce them, but they're making a lot of money. We sell everything at market in one for three or two for five dollars. That's how we sell everything, everything we sell. And that is extremely convenient for our customers. And the carrots do something really special with that. So the added labor is nice because when somebody buys a carrot, they think it's $3, but then they find out it's $2.50 if they buy another one. Um, and that helps to be able to sell other things. So they might buy a carrot and a garlic or a carrot and a bag of lettuce. Um, so carrots actually have a lot more value than just their base price. Um, although they've definitely made, I would say almost half of our income this month. And thinking ahead for July and August, we don't have as many carrots. We don't have 10 beds of carrots to feed off of in July and August. Um, we probably have about half that. And we're also just physically whooped. Like I'm taking Tuesday off, today's Tuesday, taking it off, uh, and I'm exhausted. I haven't shaved, I haven't, I feel like I haven't slept. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time with my family. I've drank a lot of beer at night, I'll admit that. I got a fly fishing pole. Next week we're gonna go fishing with my kid, but, that's like, we're just whooped. Like even though taking a full day off on Tuesdays, I'm still exhausted on Wednesday. And so trying to figure out, and this is kind of where I wanted, why I wanted to do this video is just kind of lob it out to you all and see what you thought. What are some ways in which you, in the middle of the season, when you've scaled a little bit, adjust for your time management, your energy management. And like we can do things a little bit more efficiently. Uh, that helps. Um, but what are some ways to like, do that on the fly because this is the first year we've ever really bumped up to that level and um yeah and it's tough like we're worn out just if you all have any advice or any thoughts on that i'm curious um and i also should say we're not headed towards a hundred thousand dollar hundred ten thousand dollars or whatever it would be like uh we're probably headed closer to i think we'll hit our budget by september and then hopefully we can decide from then, depending on what our full-time employee wants to do. Uh, if he wants to stay on, then we're gonna find more ways to keep going through the fall. So we're already working on that now, uh, prepping for it. And I kind of like the idea of just keeping them on year round. So that, that's sort of one thing we're ruminating on right now. It's like, how do we do that? How do we, in the middle of the season when we're super busy, but things are going really well, how do we keep it going? Um, so I don't know, any thoughts on that would be much appreciated. Like this video if you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, all those good things. Uh, check out the Frith Farm event. Uh, I have some shout outs I wanna give. Patreon shout outs, these are people who are big supporters of our what we're doing at No-Till Growers, at the No-Till Market Garden podcast, uh, here in these videos. So Yannick LaPlante, JM Fortier, Connor Crickmore, Jackson Roulette, my partner at notillgrowers.com is also a supporter, cool dude. Dawson Mahalko, Tiffany Jackson, Jamie Davis, Micro Lead and Farm, Oscar, sup? Allison Louiselle, it's French, right? Louiselle, 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 Allison, you're awesome. Sonia Mosley, 
Mike Tholis, Lindsey Rojas, Christine Albrecht and Dallas Half Acres, Ryan Goser or Gose, Firefly Farm, Fiona and Donnie, Fiona and Donnie, my buddy Aaron Hawkins, my homie. Thank you to all of you for being Patreon supporters. If you want to support the show, if you want a shout out in one of these videos, go to patreon.com slash farberjesse. Sign up, support the show, support the No-Till Market Garden podcast and all those things that will be back in the fall. Um, I'm going to go party. And by that, I mean just rest. All right, you rock. We'll see you later. Bye. Brother, what do you feed your chickens? Local, non, G, M, O, feed.